Welcome to the 5% Truth. This subseries is called The Final Days, where we explore the stories of those facing execution on death row and dive deep into the complexities surrounding their cases. I'm your host, and today we're discussing a tragic and controversial case, Robert Robertson, who is set to be executed in Texas on October 17th. Robert's story is one of heartbreak, poverty, misjudgment, and the failures of the justice system. It's also a story of a father who, despite his love for his daughter, now faces the ultimate punishment, execution, based on a discredited medical theory and misunderstood behavior. This episode is about the life and death of Robert Robertson and how his case challenges what we know about science, autism, and the criminal justice system. Robert Robertson wasn't born into privilege. In fact, his life was defined by struggle from an early age. He grew up poor, attending special education classes before dropping out of school after the ninth grade. He would later be diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder, though this diagnosis wouldn't come until much later, long after his daughter's death and his conviction. In the early 2000s, Robert was doing everything he could to provide for his family. He was separated from Nikki Curtis's mother and living with a new partner. To make ends meet, Robert worked three newspaper delivery routes, scraping together just enough money to survive. He once said, after gas and stuff, you don't make too much from a paper route. But despite his financial hardship, Robert had dreams for his two-year-old daughter, Nikki. He wanted to raise her, to provide for her, to love her. Like any father, he wanted the best for her. Nikki, however, was often sick. From the day she came to live with him, Robert found himself caring for a chronically ill child. Nikki suffered from undiagnosed pneumonia, and doctors had prescribed medications, medications that, we now know, are unsafe for children her age and condition. On the morning of January 31, 2002, Robert discovered that Nikki had fallen out of bed. She was lying face down on the floor, and there was a little bit of blood on her lip, which Robert wiped off with a towel. He put her back in bed and went back to sleep, thinking nothing of it. But when Robert woke up again, something was wrong. Nikki wasn't breathing. Her heart was still beating, but she was unresponsive. Panicking, Robert rushed his daughter to the emergency room in Palestine, Texas. By the time they arrived, Nikki was turning blue. The medical staff immediately took over, but it was too late. What happened next set the course for Robert's fate. The doctors and nurses at the hospital quickly became suspicious of Robert. They noticed his flat effect, his lack of emotional response, and misinterpreted it as a lack of concern. But what they didn't know, what no one knew at the time, was that Robert was on the autism spectrum. His inability to express emotion in a way that people expected made him seem distant and uncaring, but in reality, it was just how he processed the world. Within hours, Robert was taken into custody. The doctors suspected Nikki had died as a result of shaken baby syndrome, a diagnosis that was widely accepted in 2002. The theory behind shaken baby syndrome posits that violent shaking or blunt trauma can cause brain injuries in infants and toddlers. At the time, it was the medical community's consensus that the specific set of internal injuries Nikki presented could only be the result of violent shaking or impact. And since Robert was the last person with her, they believed he was responsible. But there was more. During the trial in 2003, a nurse testified that she believed Nikki had been sexually abused. This was even though no doctor confirmed this, the medical examiner found no evidence of sexual abuse, and later tests from a sexual abuse kit came back negative. Still, the damage was done. The implication alone was enough to turn the jury against Robert. Robert's defense team didn't mount much of a defense. His trial lawyer ignored his client's claims of innocence and instead argued that Robert had lacked the intent to kill Nikki, conceding that her death was a classic shaken baby case. No one challenged the shaken baby diagnosis during the trial, and the jury was left with only one version of the story, that Robert had shaken his daughter to death in a fit of rage. But there's a problem with this. 
In the 20 years since Robert's conviction, the shaken baby syndrome diagnosis has been thoroughly debunked by many in the medical community. We now know that the kinds of injuries Nikki suffered could have been caused by her undiagnosed pneumonia, a possible fall from the bed, or the unsafe medications she was prescribed. There was no solid evidence to prove that Robert had violently shaken his daughter. In fact, the science used to convict him would be considered unreliable today. Yet in 2003, the jury heard only one side of the story, an incomplete, scientifically flawed story that ended with Robert Robertson being sentenced to die. Robert has maintained his innocence from the beginning. He said, I would never think about shaking her, and that's God's honest truth. I don't know what happened to her. I wouldn't want that to be on nobody. To lose a child, especially if you tried to do right and you loved her, than to be accused. But Robert's trial was riddled with errors and unfairness from the start. One doctor's preliminary suspicion of shaken baby syndrome led to Robert's arrest before an autopsy had even been performed. His defense lawyer did nothing to challenge the shaken baby diagnosis. The jury was tainted by unfounded suspicions of sexual abuse, even though there was no medical evidence to support it. In 2009, Robert's team submitted his first post-conviction habeas corpus request, which the court denied. He also tried to submit additional claims at that time, but the court dismissed them. In 2016, the person filed a second request with new claims. The court agreed to review those claims and eventually decided that all four claims should be denied after a hearing. In 2023, the court confirmed that denial. In 2013, Texas became the first state to create a legal avenue for prisoners to challenge wrongful convictions based on new developments in forensic science. The idea behind this law was simple. Science evolves, and our understanding of evidence should evolve with it. If new scientific advancements prove that someone was wrongfully convicted, they deserve a new trial. But to date, not a single person on Texas's death row has been granted a new trial under this law. Not Robert Robertson, not anyone. Despite the Texas legislature's clear intent to correct past mistakes, the courts have so far failed to deliver justice for Robert. The medical evidence that led to his conviction has been debunked, yet the legal system hasn't caught up with the science. Courts in at least 18 other states have overturned convictions based on shaken baby syndrome. Parents and caregivers who were once branded murderers have been exonerated as new scientific evidence came to light. But Robert's fate now lies in the hands of the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles and Governor Greg Abbott. Advocates, including autism organizations and novelist John Grisham, have written letters urging Governor Abbott to intervene. They argue that Robert's case represents a tragic miscarriage of justice and that executing him would be a grave error. But time is running out, and Texas has yet to act. In July 2024, the court scheduled his execution for October 17, 2024. On August 1, 2024, the legal team filed a third habeas corpus request and asked to delay the execution. They raised five claims saying he deserved relief because new evidence shows his conviction was based on false and misleading testimony. New medical evidence contradicts the shaken baby syndrome testimony used in his trial. His conviction relied on discredited medical opinions, violating his right to a fair trial. His lawyers went against his decision to maintain his innocence during the trial. New medical evidence proves he is actually innocent. The court reviewed these new claims, but decided they did not meet the necessary legal standards, so the court dismissed the application without addressing the claims in detail. The court also denied the request to delay the execution. This decision was made on September 11, 2024. The story of Robert Robertson is more than just one man's fight for his life. It's a story about the failures of our criminal justice system, how it treats those who don't conform to societal expectations, how outdated science can lead to wrongful convictions, and how, even when the truth comes to light, 
the wheels of justice often turn too slowly. As we approach October 17th, the question remains, will Robert Robertson's life be spared, or will Texas move forward with an execution based on flawed, outdated science? This is The 5% Truth, series, The Final Days. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more about Robert Robertson's case or how to get involved, I encourage you to visit the advocacy groups working to stay his execution. Join me next time as we continue to explore the human stories of those facing the ultimate punishment and the lingering questions that follow them to the end.